Hi guys, Duck Lures here with Lure Making 101, a simple tutorial series for beginners who want to learn lure making with a minimum of tools, materials or experience. In this tutorial we're going to make Dock Minnow, which is a 70mm shallow diving bolster lure. You may have seen this in Fishing Monthly magazine, if not go and check them out at fishingmonthly.com.au. Now if you want templates and tips for making this lure, visit my website at makewoodenlures.com slash fishing dash monthly. So start by cutting out your template and transferring the shape to a piece of 12mm or half inch thick balsa wood. Next, separate the blanks using a sharp utility knife and then pare away some of the waste. Now you don't need to pare all the way down to the line here. As you'll see, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra waste and in the next step, we're going to clean this up and square up the blank. It's very important to keep your blank nice and square in the early stages so that all of your hook hangers and toe points are perfectly aligned. Notice I'm working with the grain here and always carving away from my hand so as to avoid cutting myself. To square up the blank, I've glued a piece of sandpaper to a square wood block. I'm just holding the lure nice and still on a flat surface and sanding over until I've shaped the lure right back down to the line. For the convex surface I'm using a square block. In a moment I'll switch over to a curved block to sand the concave side of the lure belly. Use fresh sandpaper and light pressure to make this work best. Now we're going to mark the location of all of our hardware. I'm marking a centre line from one end of the lure to the other along the belly. Now we're keeping these lures super simple, so we're using twist eyes for the toe point of the hook hangers. That means drilling a few holes to glue those twist eyes into. Pretty easily done using a battery drill and just putting the point of a 2 or 2.5mm drill bit into each of the holes that you've marked out in the previous step. Take care not to drill into your fingers. For the weights we're going to use a larger drill bit, so I'm using a brad point bit of 4.5mm diameter. Brad point bit allows us to drill accurately and we can open the hole up later with a larger drill if we need to. Then we'll use a fine tooth saw to make a slot for the diving lid. Be sure to get this as square as possible, it's really important to be able to tune the lure and having a crooked diving lip makes that very difficult. Now we can start to shape the top profile of the lure by trimming away the waist down to those lines we marked earlier on. Once again, don't cut all the way down to the line, we're going to use a sanding block to clean up and square up the timber. Work slowly, work gently and take small slivers rather than take large deep cuts. Try and keep the wood as square and cross-sectional as possible 
features once again that allow you to get everything aligned properly for a high performance lure. Yep. Now we can start to knock those corners off and round off the lure. Here you can see I'm marking guidelines for my carving. These are basically just a line that goes halfway between that centre line and the edge of the timber. I'm going to do this on all four sides and I'm going to mark a centre line on the side profile, once again doing it by eye rather than measuring. Take small slivers with a utility knife and pair down between the two carving guidelines. Once you've knocked the four corners off, you can smooth the shape up a little bit with a utility knife and then pick up some sandpaper and clean it up and refine the shape. Bolster wood's quite soft, so it's very easy to remove too much timber and spoil the shape. There are three ways that toe points and hook hangers are commonly added to lures. Screw eyes simply screw into the timber, handmade twist eyes are twisted up out of stainless steel wire and glued into holes, and a through wire which runs in a slot from the front to the back of the lure. For simplicity, we're going to use twist eyes for this lure, mainly because it's quick and easy, doesn't require any special materials, and it's strong enough for our purposes. But if you're going to be using these lures for line classes 6 kilograms or higher, I'd suggest going for a through wire instead, just for the extra strength and security. Here's how I make my twist eyes. This is a 3mm drill bit, and I'm simply bending a piece of 1.2mm stainless steel wire around the drill. I use 316 grade marine stainless steel wire for this because I don't want any corrosion to happen in my lures. With my screw eyes ready to go, I'm going to mix up some epoxy. Use 24 hour curing super strength epoxy for this. 5 minute curing epoxy is not a good choice because it breaks down quickly and isn't strong enough. Be sure and get plenty of epoxy into the hole and all over the shaft of the twist eye before it's pushed into the lure. Rotating the twist eye against the twist will help to push the adhesive deeper into the hole rather than squeeze it out. Repeat the process for the toe point and the belly hook and then you're ready to start installing the weights. Now why is adding weight important for our lure? Well what the weight does is helps to stop the lure from rolling over onto its side during use. That allows the diving lip to work better and gives you a better, stronger, more stable action over a wider range of cranking speeds. You don't require a lot of weight to stabilise a small lure like this. In fact, I've split a small ball sinker in two with a utility knife. The weight that I'm inserting weighs around about one gram. As you can see, I've filled the hole with epoxy, placed the weight into the wet epoxy, pushed it in place, and I'm simply going to add some more epoxy over the top to fill the void that's left behind. Sometimes the epoxy will shrink during curing and you'll need to apply a second batch to build the belly of the lure up so that the weight can't be seen.
Once your teeth is dry, it's time to harden the balsa. Balsa is a very soft wood, so applying some epoxy to the outside of the lure and allowing it to soak into the grain will make the lure more durable and longer lasting. Here I'm brushing on epoxy that's been thinned with methylated spirits to make it soak in better to the grain. It's simply a matter of brushing it on liberally, working it in and making sure it soaks as far into the water as possible. It helps to have the lure body warm before you start so the pores of the water open. Allow at least 24 hours for the epoxy to cure and then smooth the lure off using wet sanding paper. I'm using 240 grit but you could use 400 grit if you prefer. The idea is to sand until everything feels smooth and all the gloss has been removed from the epoxy. This process not only hardens the wood, it waterproofs it and also fills the grain for a better looking paint job later on. Here's how the lure should look once the sanding's finished and you're ready for paint. I'm going to install a diving lip before I paint the lure. And this is a personal preference. Some people prefer to install the diving lip after the lure has been painted. My diving lips have been cut from 2mm polycarbonate using a pair of kitchen scissors that you can see in the top right of the video. Work some epoxy into the lure. Here I'm using an open paper clip to work it well in. Wipe off the excess and slide the polycarbonate bib into the lure, making sure it's properly aligned before setting it aside to cure. If you're just getting started at lure making, there's nothing wrong with using a brush, some artist acrylic model paints or lacquer, or perhaps picking up an aerosol can or two from the touch-up section of the auto store. But if you get more serious about making lures, you're probably going to want to use an airbrush. So for the remainder of this tutorial, I'm going to show you some simple airbrush techniques that I use to paint up this lure. Here I'm starting by spraying the epoxy lure with some Autoborn white sealer. The purpose of this coat is to give good adhesion to the paint to the lure. Next I'll give the lure a coat of Wicked Yellow. This is a great opaque colour that's perfect as a base. Notice I'm not spraying on one heavy coat, but doing it in several light passes so I get a nice even colour without any runs or dags. On the back of the lure I'm going to go over the Wicked Yellow with Auto Air Metallic Bronze to give a nice bronzy sheen. Then I'll spray a little auto wear red just under the chin to give the bleeding gill effect. With some transparent black and a simple stencil, I'll paint gills and fins on the lure. go ahead and use a fine piece of wire to dot some black and then some red dots all over the dorsal surface of the lure. And finally I'll dab some eyes on the lure using some drill bits to give the finished effect. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and don't forget to check out my website makewoodenlures.com for more tips, templates and tutorials. Bye for now.